Good morning, Emmanuel and St. Philips. I pray that you are all blessed and well, and I'd just like to welcome you to the service today. Let us proceed. The Lord be with you, and also with you. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you. Praise the Lord. Praise God, you servants of the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's name, now and forever. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In a moment of silence, let us call to mind and confess our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, to live in love and peace with our neighbor. Let us pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone, for the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in years of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our collect for the day. Almighty Father, you have broken the tyranny of sin and sent the Spirit of your Son into our hearts. Take and receive our freedom and bring us to a glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray the COVID-19 prayer together. Loving God, your desire is for wholeness and well-being. We hold in tenderness and, and pray the collective suffering of our world at this time. We grieve precious lives lost and vulnerable lives threatened. We ache for ourselves and our neighbors standing before an uncertain future. May love, not fear, go viral. Inspire our leaders to discern and choose wisely, aligned with the common good. Help us to practice social distancing and reveal to us new and creative ways to come together in spirit and solidarity. Call us to profound trust in you and your faithful presence, you, the God who does not abandon. Amen. The first reading is from Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 3 to 14. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in, in Christ to be put into effect when times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who, who, who works out everything in, in conformity with the, with the purpose of his will. In, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you were included in Christ 
when he had the message of truth, the gospel of salvation. When you believed, you were marked in his, marked in him with the seal, the, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit in guaranteeing our inheritance until he, until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Hear the word of the Lord. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 6, verse 14 to 29. Glory to Christ our Saviour. King Herod heard about this, for Jesus' name had become well known. Some were saying, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead, and this is why miraculous powers are at work in him. Others said he is Elijah. And still others claimed he is a prophet, like one of the prophets of long ago. But when Herod heard this, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised from the dead. For Herod himself had given orders to have John arrested, and he had him bound and put in prison. He did this because Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, whom he had married, for John had been saying to Herod, It's not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. So Herodias nursed a grudge against John and wanted to kill him. But she was not able to, because Herod feared John and protected him, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man. When Herod heard John, he was greatly puzzled, yet he liked to listen to him. Finally, the opportune time came. On his birthday, Herod gave a banquet for his high officials and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. When the daughter Herodi of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his dinner guest. The king said to the girl, Ask me for anything you want. I'll give it to you. And he promised her with an oath. Whatever you ask, I will give you up to half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask for? The head of John the Baptist, she answered. At once the girl hurried in to the king with the request, I want you to give me right now the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was greatly distressed, but because of his oaths and his dinner guest, he did not want to refuse her, so he immediately sent an executioner with the orders to bring John's head. The man went, beheaded John in the prison, and brought back his head on a platter. He presented it to the girl, and she gave it to her mother. On hearing this, John's disciples came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Thank you, the Lord, for who you are. Thank you for the many blessings you bestow upon us. Thank you that we can come and hear and receive your word again. Even though we are distant and apart, the Lord, we can still celebrate who you are in our lives, the Lord. I pray that as we listen, to this message and as you use me for your service to Lord, that I speak only that which you laid upon my heart and that you will be done and not mine. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So today's passage is a bit of a strange one because we find in Mark where it's a slipped in the story of the beheading of John the Baptist. But I'm going to start from the top and start speaking into what happens in that space and also what does that mean for us today. So we find that Jesus' ministry is booming, he's healing the sick, he's healing people who are born with certain diseases and ailments and his, his ministry is really alive and people are starting to speak and they're saying he is now the follow up to John, the one who baptized, 
or he's the reincarnation of Elijah and so many people are saying so many things about Jesus but here we find Herod the king or actually a tetrarch is what he's called he's a supposed king he's one of the general rulers of the space of the space he's not really a king per se um, because the Roman Empire didn't recognize him as a king but he was in this gospel story they call him King Herod because of the person he is and the title he had as in the Jewish kingdom and he hears this about Jesus and he thinks about John who he had beheaded and they do kind of a flashback where Herod recalls the events that happened and they give us some context that Herod actually married his brother Philip's wife and John spoke up against this because they did something unlawful. He was not supposed to marry his brother's wife. This is adultery in the sense. And she was not okay with John just throwing out accusations and bore, bore a grudge against him. And so in turn, Herod had him arrested and bounded and put in a cell. But he didn't want to have him killed because he respected John. He knew he was wrong. He knew who John was. He knew that John was respected in the community. And he knew that John had a following. And he didn't want to oppose this religious man who was a man good all through and through. And he had no reason to kill this man. But Herodias, his wife, was not okay with this. She wanted John to know his place. It's many times in, in our space also when somebody wanted wants you to know that they are large and in charge, they will they will say something like, Do you know who you're messing with? Do you know who you're talking to? Almost like know your place in my presence, know your place, watch your tongue. Sometimes people just show up and their presence is known because of the attitude and what they bring to the space. A, makes me think about an old Joko ad um, where this guy comes with his business flight ticket and the lady behind the desk is like the flight already left I can't let you board the plane though it's, it's still late now and then he's like do you know who I am that's a business class ticket this man in a suit in, of great importance stating his claim and saying he is a presence not to be messed with and another flight attendant comes along or hostess she comes along and she says oh sir i didn't realize and then she picks up the phone the intercom after taking a sip of tea and saying there's a man at the desk if somebody knows who he is please assist him because he doesn't know who he is so yeah, that's a bit of an icebreaker, but that's what happens still in today's society where people, they rise to certain ranks or they are associated with somebody of importance and it's like, I know that a guy, I know that person, so don't mess with me. And this is the attitude of Herodias, like, I'm married to Herod, I'm the king's wife here, and you can't speak about the king and I the way you are. And you need a lesson to be learned. Yes, he was bound and put in jail, but she was not happy with that. It's very interesting that Herodias is actually named because oftentimes in the biblical narratives, the women remain unnamed. And I think because she was Herod's wife and she played such great importance in the beheading of John the Baptist that they named her so that the historical event could be known across the board till today. But going back to what actually happened was Herod had hosted a party in a sense and he had all these important figures and generals and his wife's daughter, they don't say that it's his daughter, he said Herodias' daughter, so it could be his stepdaughter, was dancing. Um, many scholars or many interpretations speak about this sexual um, prowess of this girl dancing, entertaining this drunk king and his friends. But there's actually many other scholars that say that's not the case because the word used for her in the daughter is the same term used for the girl 
who was um, healed by Jesus, where he called her awake as a 12 year old girl. And also the dancing, the word for dancing speaks about when children play around. So she was play dancing. She was really just dancing in front of her dad or her stepdad and his friends. We oftentimes have family events and they say, um, tell the little girl or little boy, show our auntie so-and-so what you learned at school or they recite a poem or do something exciting or they um, can dance or they do some sort of trick or they have their football we, um, or something that they do and you can show it on our phones these days. Look what my, my child can do. And this is what um, many scholars actually think happened. She was the innocent participant in this where she was dancing and uh, she entertained her, uh, her father, her stepfather and his friends. And she then was very delighted because she made them happy. And he said, oh, I'm, I will give you anything in the kingdom. That was so great. I'll give you anything, sorry, I'll give you anything you want, even half my kingdom. I swear in front of all these people that whatever you want, I'll give it to you. And what she does is, as a child would do is, I don't know, this is a big ask. Um, go to mommy and ask mommy, what do you think I should ask, ask for um, in return? And the mom holding this grudge says, this is the perfect opportunity. He swore an oath in front of all these people that he'll give this girl whatever she wants. And she tells her daughter, go ask him to um, bring you John the Baptist's head on the platter. Charles is probably like, whatever, that's okay. And runs up to the king, Herod, and, he said, and she says, I want John the Baptist's head on a platter. The king instantly regretted this choice of offering anything to the child, not knowing that Herodias will get involved. And because he swore this oath, he then said he couldn't go back on it. So he then asked one of his guards to go behead John the Baptist. And John's head then gets brought on a platter in this space where people are celebrating and Herodias celebrates a win. Herod wasn't happy because he didn't want to execute John. And his followers actually came to fetch his body and went to bury it. This was not a celebratory experience for Herod or for the followers of John, not even for Jesus. And this is the story of today. One of the greatest men who served God, who was a prophet, someone who came before Jesus to prepare the way, the person who baptized Jesus was killed. Not in a polite way or not of old age, but he was beheaded. This was a great tra tragedy in the, in the community. Because John was such an isolated man in the desert, came just with the mission of God on his heart. And Jesus now, following on that ministry, friends with John, even related to John actually, now had to deal with this and now had to continue this ministry. And we know the end of the story. Jesus too was killed. So what does that mean for us today? It means that, to me, ministry doesn't mean it's going to be all well, good and well. It's not going to be all roses and butterflies. It's going to be hard. There's many times we're going to face opposition. Not everybody knows our mission. Not everybody knows that what we are saying is for true peace and love and deliverance and for people to actually experience who God is. But the people of God, even the disciples, were killed. They were faced with so much hatred and was, were harmed and abuse of languages thrown out of cities. We are not supposed to expect that everything is just going to go up and up and up in terms of monetary terms. Often we associate 
money or property or certain things of value as blessings. I'm not saying they are not blessings. But what I am saying is that God blesses us with so much every day. The ability to walk, to talk, to see, to hear, to smell. There's so many people who don't have those little things that we take for granted every day. And in the COVID-19 pandemic, we realize there's so many people losing their lives and have such small comorbidities and they die. We have blessings upon blessings each and every day. We have miracles happening in our lives every day. And us as followers of Jesus need to know that sometimes it's not going to pan out the way we expect it. But we have to expect God's will to be done. We have to take cognizance that suffering was part of the journey. I'm not saying it's going to be pleasant um, or suffering is something to look forward to. That it's a pleasant thing to go suffer. Um, but Paul also writes about how difficult it is to journey and do these things. There's so much stuff happening all the time in the different churches. He has to write the church of Ephesus and he celebrates with them. And he writes to so many other churches and communities to say that you are doing good work. But then he also says, this journey is difficult and what you did there is not okay. I know that I'm not the perfect person to speak, but we need to glorify God and not ourselves. And so what does that mean as, as the closing part of this message? It means that God blesses us in many ways, but to be a follower of, of Jesus means that the road might get very difficult and uncomfortable. It's not always going to be easy. Yes, there are great, amazing moments where God takes us to levels we never expected, but there's also going to be lows that we're not going to know how to deal with. God allows us to lament and cry out to Him and cast our burdens upon Him and lay our problems at His feet. God is there. But it doesn't mean that everything is always going to be great. Especially now, reflecting on our world today. We need to trust and walk with God and know that God is good and whatever He has planned for us is good and perfect and within His plan and purpose for our lives. And we need to say thank you to God for the many blessings that He bestowed upon us. Even though we don't know, sometimes we recognize those blessings. But we need to remain thankful, prayerful and know that whatever God has planned for us, even though it might look like suffering or it is suffering, it's within the plan of following Jesus and being more of who God needs us to be in this world. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us it becomes the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross. 
that he might shatter the chains of the evil one and banish the darkness of sin and death. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. And now, with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. So we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering therefore his death and resurrection, we bring before you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon this celebration of your Holy Church and gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together they may give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honour are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray in the language of our choice. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break is not a sharing of the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he so receive the bread, the body of Jesus Christ broken for you, and the blood shed for you. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is gracious. God's mercy endures forever. We pray together, Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. In Jesus Christ our Lord, send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. God bless Africa, protect our children, transform our leaders, heal our communities, restore our dignity and give us peace. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those whom you love this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.